G'day, it's Joe again. In this advanced tutorial, I'm going to show you how to assign a symbol catalog to some of the buttons on the top of your tool panel in Campaign Cartographer. This makes uh, using your symbol catalogs, your custom symbol catalogs, very easy. So let's start by opening up Campaign Cartographer. Now, uh, I hope that you've uh, viewed the previous tutorial uh, where we created a custom catalog and you can see that we've got it loaded in here. Um, so if you haven't watched that tutorial, please go back and watch it before you start this one. But basically we're going to assume that you know how to create a custom catalog. We have opened this custom catalog manually by using the open catalog button here and selecting the catalog in this manner. Now obviously that's very cumbersome. It's not very automated. What we want to do is assign the catalog to one of the buttons up here. We're currently building this catalog interface for Cosmographer, but you can use the techniques here for Dungeon Designer, for Overland Mapping, for anything. It's always done the same way. And what you're going to do is you're going to select the particular button that you want. So let's say I click on the Passageway button. You can see that by default it loads in a catalog of passageways. If we were to click on, say, the Staircase button, it will load in a default catalog of staircases. Um, sometimes when you push these buttons, it will actually bring up a little box with multiple catalogs, and that's what we want. We want to be able to allow people to select the particular catalog they want within a certain filtered list of symbol catalogs. Okay, so we'll get started on it. The first step is to click on the Symbols menu, and you then come down to Symbol Settings. Now, the available catalogs that we have listed for the currently selected symbol catalog settings that we have got is just this passageway list here. Now, here's a little trick. You can actually turn on and off how the, that list is displayed. Um, I'm going to work with the symbol catalog turned off for the moment. And the actual symbol catalogs which are being displayed are defined by this filter here. So any of the available symbol catalog sets, you have to now think of this as a, as a, as a set of filters, um, has to have the word passage in it. Uh, if we were to change that, I'm just going to show you something. If I just leave that as just a straight asterisk, you'll actually see all of the catalogs in this uh, in this folder. We don't, sorry, in this set. We don't want that, so I'm just going to go back to making this uh, passage. There we go. Okay, so that's the basic way that you'd navigate getting different symbol catalogs, but it still doesn't tell us how to associate it to a button. In order to do that, we need to click on the Advanced tab here. Now, with the Advanced tab open, um, we're going to have to talk about a few concepts. First of all, um, the catalog set that, we've, that we're working with will need a filtered name. That means that all of the catalogs uh, that we have defined in here, all the catalog files that we define in here, can be given any name, and as long as it has the word Passage, it will be shown in this list. When you click on this button here, it defaults to calling the fill all the catalogs which have got the name passage in them. You've also got this thing called a master filter. Now the master filter defines the overall style set that these catalogs are in. So you might have, for example, uh, in overland mapping, you might have four or five different catalogs for mountains, some field, some black and white, um, others uh, vectors, and so forth. And all of these could be displayed as long as they all shared the same master filter. And then, of course, we would have mountains or something similar here to make sure that we only view within the overall set just the mountains. So I hope that makes sense. It's basically a nesting. But if you just keep in mind that you've got a master filter and then a, a subfilter within that, that really lets you say, I want all the catalogs relating to the style, all the toolbars, they're all related. And then a subfilter to say, what button have I pressed? Got it. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we would like to add a new catalog in here. And that catalog is going to be the, the uh, simple catalog that we created previously. Now to do this, we have to go new. And it's asking us for a name. Now I'm going to call this Cosmo Bitmap A, which is, as you can see, the master filter name, Passage, which is the catalog filter setting there, and then I'm going to give it a name, and I'm going to call this, actually I'll be a little bit more specific about that, I'm going to call this Floor Signs, 
has a text, nice and clear. Now because we've included Cosmo bitmap A, that's the styles that we've got, that's our master filter, and passage, this will show correctly. So I'm going to click on OK. Now select it from this list. Unfortunately, um, when you select on this list, it actually doesn't display, but uh, trust me, as long as you click on the correct symbol set here that we've now named, it will be correct. So what we now need to do is click on Browse here and actually put the symbol catalog that we created in our previous tutorial into this spot. So to do that, I'm going to have to go to my C drive, Pro Fantasy, Campaign Cartographer, Symbols, Cosmographer, and there's the one that we want. So I'm going to double click on that. And as you can see, it's put in our hyperspace floor hazard text symbol catalog here, which will show up in our menu as this. And that's actually all that you really need to do. However, there's a couple of additional settings that will make things even faster and easier. If we click here the properties, it'll bring up this menu. Now with this you can you can set certain things automatically. For example, we know that this symbol catalog will automatically place itself down on a particular sheet which was set to, uh, within the symbol catalog itself. But with these tools you can also say that these will uh, these symbols will be placed down on a particular layer as well. Actually, yes, we'll leave that on the deck layer. So that means that these symbols will drop straight down on the deck. Um, you can also adjust the fill styles, line styles, etc, etc, but quite frankly you don't really need to worry about any of those. And so once you've done that for this catalog, we just click on OK and OK, save the settings, yes. Great, so actually what we've done now is we've saved our symbol set. So now, note what happens. I've clicked on Windows there, we've gone to our symbol set, but now when I click on the passageways, it brings up this selection tool for me. You can see there's our floor signage. If I click on that, it will correctly load in these symbols. I'm also going to show you something. I'm going to change it to say furnishings. There's my layer over to furnishings. I'll even change this to hull. So we'll keep it completely different. So we've got our sheet set to hull, we've got our furnishings layer set here. So now we've got that set up. If I was to um, go to our symbol set and I click on this, you'll automatically see that it has changed to symbols for floor signs and deck. And I can whack on, well, I won't make it an airlock. Let's, uh, let's put something more appropriate. Where's that wonderful? Ah, there's a power sign in here somewhere. Ah, there we go, power supply. And we'll whack that in front of this doorway here. And in keeping with the previous color scheme, and I'm just using the arrow keys to rotate that symbol around, and we'll drop that there. Fantastic, so now you can see how you can very quickly add any symbol set to your tool panels. And the great thing is that this actually exists on all of your new maps. So now whenever you make a new map, you're going to have those tools available to you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm just going to save off my map now and um, have a great time mapping.